one of my biggest complaints with Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag was that I rarely actually cared about Edward's story as I sailed across the Caribbean. Well, I'm happy to say that the Freedom Cry DLC tells the emotional story of Adewale, Edward Kenway's one-time first mate, as it dives into some heavy, powerful themes of slavery and the true price of freedom. Adewale's life is very different than that of any other AC protagonist, which makes his journey quite refreshing. Too many! We'll retreat through the storm! But ironically, the thing I liked most about Black Flag, the sheer freedom of exploration, is nowhere to be found in Adewale's journey. Instead, Freedom Cry disappointingly uses the series' main tropes as a crutch, and even goes as far as to roll back some of the improvements that Black Flag proper made. I have nothing to offer but thanks. Nothing else is needed. As a boy, I fled the same fate. Adewale's mission to liberate the slaves of Port-au-Prince while attempting to spark a revolution is as engrossing a tale as the series has had since the Ezio trilogy. There's some real humanity in his journey, and it manages to hit notes that resonated quite deeply with me. Experiencing the new sights and sounds of Port-au-Prince were great, as the series has a unique feel compared to the main hubs of Black Flag. Sure, the villain is a two-dimensional governor who revels in the misery of his subjects, but that made me want to throw a wrench in his plans all the more. Freedom Cry wisely integrates the story themes with the actual gameplay. Most of the side quests and diversions you'll stumble across involve saving the life of another human being. No matter if it's a runaway being hunted down, a pair of disobedient slaves being whipped, or the auctioning off of a family, I always felt an intense moral pang to stop what I was doing and step in to right those horrors. It might be a bit unsubtle on Ubisoft's part, but I felt compelled to continue liberating slaves and adding members to my growing resistance. My main gripe with the liberation mechanics of Freedom Cry is that they ultimately don't pay off in a rewarding way. As I watched my resistance movement steadily grow, I kept expecting the number to eventually come into play in some sort of massive revolution mission, where we overthrow the island's corrupt leaders. Sadly, the men and women you save only seem to exist to help you unlock character upgrades at predetermined intervals. I quickly realized that I wasn't saving them for the upgrades. I was saving them for me. Madame Joseph. Expecting a package. It... But not you. Despite Freedom Cry's much improved story and dense setting, it still stumbles over the problems that have plagued the series since its beginning, and even some that seem to have been fixed. Black Flag managed to combat the fatigue of Assassin's Creed's repetitive tail and stab missions by allowing us to freely explore a massive world and create our own adventures. But Freedom Cry's relatively compact map confines us to the main story. There are few distractions in the world, and it only took me an extra hour to see most of what the West Indies had to offer. In a story so heavily wrapped around the concept of freedom, I was sad to find that I had little choice in how my adventure would play out. Best begin soon. There's much to do. For better or worse, Freedom Cry feels like an entire Assassin's Creed game distilled into five hours. That's good, but it's an Assassin's Creed game that doesn't include many of the steps forward that Black Flag so recently made. I couldn't help but leave disappointed by the bland missions and ironic loss of freedom, which is definitely a bummer. But despite this, Adwale's journey genuinely moved me as it dealt with themes and situations rarely explored in video games. A story unfettered by Assassins vs. Templar mysticism keeps it grounded and powerful. For more on Assassin's Creed, keep it here on IGN. Now take a look at one of my favorite moments from the game. Je parie, non? Je vois.